Hey everyone, it's uh, been uh, been a few weeks between videos. Um, I suppose there's a couple of a couple of reasons for that. One, um, I had a bit of an injury just prior to New Year's Eve. Uh, New Year's Eve for me was uh, quite painful, so I uh, came off my mountain bike uh, quite hard, unfortunately. Took a trip over the handlebars and. Um, I was probably doing about 25, 30, 30 k's an hour when that happened and uh, my left shoulder bore the brunt of that impact and uh, resulting in a dislocation as well as a, a break to my upper humerus on my left arm which is also uh, my, my trigger finger. So um, yeah, uh, uh, a 90 minute drive to... Uh, my uh, my local hospital to be uh, x-rayed, cat scanned, poked and prodded with uh, needles and uh, a bit of morphine and a few other things to, to help. But um, yeah, after a few hours in hospital, I was uh, able to uh, limp out of there. And uh, pretty much since then, I've been uh, focusing on uh, trying to rehab the, the shoulder and arm. The, uh, the break in the arm has healed, but the, uh, the shoulder dislocation was a, a bad one. And um, I'm about four weeks away from uh, hopefully sort of back to, back to full strength. I, um, I did upload a, um, a couple of videos testing out the broken arm. Um, you know, I was able to, to shoot, but uh, physically, yeah, you know, I was definitely, definitely underdone didn't work out too well for me at the New South Wales Queens um, probably took on a uh, you know a bit more than uh, I could chew at that uh, had a reasonable sort of start to the event but um, you know I thought I could sort of get through six days of shooting I did the New South Wales city versus country teams uh, match Shot well there, had the top aggregate score for, for all city country shooters on the day. Um, only dropped one point on the day, so uh, I was pleased with that and went into the, um, the, the two-day lead-up to the Queens with um, fairly high expectations. I shot okay. Conditions were pretty good. Uh, I, did, uh, I was two points down over the two days, but... Um, yeah, the uh, ultimately the winner for that uh, that match didn't drop a point at all. So, yeah, I think I sort of finished uh, might have been sixth, I think, in the in the lead up. Um, I was happy with the second day of it at the at the longs at seven hundred and eight hundred meters. Had um, stayed clean that day, so um, yeah, the rifle was certainly working well. It was um, yeah, just a question of. Uh, the guy behind the uh, the trigger doing his his job, and from there though, unfortunately, heading into the Queens proper, uh, things just started to go downhill from there. Really, uh, the weather was warm and sunny, and you know, whilst Malabar is probably in one of the best locations in the world, being you know literally right on the ocean. Um, yeah, you're still out in the sun. It was hot. It was humid. Although you don't sort of notice it with the with the sea breeze coming off, and you know, I I didn't stay hydrated um, enough. Uh, I was coming home dehydrated um, at the end of the day shooting, and not sleeping well because of my arm and shoulder. Um, I am a side sleeper and couldn't really sleep on my side properly, so. You know, I was waking up tired and grumpy, dehydrated, you know, a bit stiff and sore, obviously. And, um, you know, once you're dehydrated, your mind's not really sort of with it. And, you know, the first thing to suffer there is your concentration. And the second day of the Queens, my, my concentration let me down, you know, really, really poorly. Um, I had uh, the tuner on my 300 WSM had sort of been bumped inadvertently. I didn't bother to check it before I shot and I dropped a heap of points before realizing my mistake and um, at that stage you know I realized things weren't weren't getting any better and uh, I uh, fell on my sword and and withdrew from the Queens 
had a bit of a break since then. I've just been working on uh, on the rehab. Uh, my rehab is going ahead of schedule, so that's one positive at least. And I've also managed to, to do something with this particular rifle in front. So some of you would have seen this in a previous video as my 300 WSM. Well, I've turned this into a switch barrel project now. Um, as probably most of you that are watching this video would realize, you know, particularly the reloaders out there, there is a bit of a shortage now on components. Primers in particular and projectiles are proving particularly difficult to come by, particularly here in Australia. We're on the other side of the world from where most of the good stuff is made. Um, you know, I, I do generally, I don't exclusively shoot burger bullets, but they are my main, my main go-to bullet in, in all my F-Open rifles. Uh, burger bullets are, are what I use. Uh, I didn't see any point in burning up the 300 WSM barrel at local club shoots. And likewise with my 284 Shahane, um, you know, those two calibers are not cheap to feed. So what I've done uh, as a switch barrel project, um, I've gone to a six millimeter. Uh, I have had some six millimeter projectiles sort of sitting at home for the past two years that haven't really been uh, getting a lot of use. And I thought for, you know, I've, whilst I've got some components here uh, ready to sort of go, I may as well spin up a, uh, a six mil uh, it's a bit cheaper to feed. Bullets aren't quite as expensive. There's less powder in the case, depending on your caliber of choice, of course. And uh, I thought it would be a fun project to do as a, um, a local club uh, rifle and see how it turns out. So I suppose to let you, let you in on what I've done, uh, if we take a closer look, new barrel and the key difference between this one and the one that uh, my well is my chambered in 300 WSM this one's got a Dan Bramley tuner on the end like my 284 Shahane it is a Bartland barrel it's a you know, 5R 1 in 8 twist it's parallel all the way through as you can see and for a 6 mil like 32, you don't often, this is the first 32 inch barrel in a 6 mil that I've actually seen. Most of the ones um, sold through the local Bartland distributor um, in Australia tend to sort of finish at 30 inches. But he had a 32 in stock and it was the only one he had in stock. So um, beggars can't be choosers. I, I bought it and that's what I've had chambered up in. Have a look. Get this in the focus. It is a six mil GT, uh, or on some of the forums out there, the Gay Tiger. So, why did I choose the six GT? I've actually been uh, sitting on a good set of dies. I've got Reading competition. Uh, full length three sizer uh, and uh, competition bullet micrometer cedar uh, for just over a couple of years now. And I also had managed to get my hands on um, a JGS reamer and uh, go gauge for the 6GT. Um, the problem I've had in all that time uh, and going back to the you know the worldwide sort of shortage of uh, components uh, particularly certain calibers was brass uh, there had not been any 6gt brass available in australia at all until uh, this year when i believe the brass finally arrived it was alpha munitions brass which is what this brass is 
Uh, when did that arrive? Would have been sort of end of January, start of February. So, yeah, I bought bought a few boxes. I'd sort of pre-ordered some. I knew it was coming, but it literally took um, it took two years to get that brass out of the US over to Australia um, into the hands of Adam at uh, Three Gun Tactical up in Queensland. So, yeah, it's... Um, why did I choose a, a 6GT over... Um, other small 6 mil calibers like, you know, the 6BR, the 6 Brackley, uh, the 6 Dasher. Um, I have shot a 6 mil Brackley. I actually have dies for the 6 Brackley. Lovely cartridge. Absolutely phenomenally accurate and easy to tune. But um, I suppose that's one thing that attracts me to F-Class Open is um, the ability to, you know, you can you can shoot any caliber up to up to eight millimeters and there's an awful lot of calibers out there and um the curiosity in me likes to likes to try new things so i didn't uh, want to go down the path of the i guess some of the hassles with the six mil dasher particularly with regards to fire forming having said that at the time you know there was no Alpha munitions, Dasher brass available. There was no Peterson um, Dasher brass available. Both both companies now make factory Dasher brass, uh, which probably makes it a different proposition for a lot of shooters that um, uh, may have con contemplated shooting a Dasher but didn't want to go through the hassle of of you know forming false shoulders and fire forming and and so forth. Um, a lot of that hard work has now been been taken out but yeah as I sort of alluded to I did commit to the 6GT early through getting uh, getting my hands on the the dies and the reamer um, reasonably quickly and I, I thought it was actually going to be a reasonably straightforward process to to get one up and running uh, so yeah why why the GT I was immediately attracted to the I guess the the general design of the case uh, I like the fact it has a long neck the the long neck is actually similar to the six mil Brackley the, the six mil Brackley has a longer neck than a six mil Dasher which does give you a bit more flexibility with your bullet seating depth so that was one one factor uh, the second factor was you know the the 6GT was not designed to beat the Dasher it was designed as an alternative for the Dasher for Predominantly, I think, you know, that the PRS um, scene, the PRS scene in the US is a big, big thing. I, I do sort of understand and recognise that. I'm not a PRS shooter. Uh, we have a, we do have a PRS scene in Australia. Uh, I'm not really part of it. Um, but, um, you know, I guess what, I, what I'd also liked about the 6GT was the 35 degree shoulder angle. So... You know, for, for anyone watching this that's got experience with the 284 Winchester, uh, the 300 WSM, both cartridges um, are obviously ultra accurate when tuned correctly and loaded up correctly. Both have a 35 degree shoulder angle. Um, I, I shoot both, obviously, and I'm a fan of that 35 degree shoulder angle. It also... You know, it's not quite that 40 degree Ackley improved, but the 35 degree shoulder angle also reduces the need to uh, to trim the brass. You know, there's a there's a bit more that needs to go on for that brass to sort of flow and require trimming. So, uh, I guess there was a, a maintenance factor involved in my decision as well. Uh, small rifle primer for the case. The, the Brackley, the BR, the Dashes obviously all operate on small rifle primers and that case is just inherently accurate, like stupid crazy accurate. I was hoping, I wasn't entirely convinced of course, but hoping that the, the 6GT could sort of, um, if not match it, certainly come very close to matching the, the levels of accuracy that a lot of Dasher shooters uh, um, you know, do achieve. I've got several friends that shoot dashes and you know they are phenomenally accurate 
in the right hands. So yeah, the case capacity of the GT is a little more than the Dasher. And that gives me an opportunity to run 2209 ADI 2209 powder for the US or guys watching overseas, that is Hodgen 4350. Which in a case the size of the GT, it's a very slow burning powder, but combined with the 32 inch barrel and the projectile of choice that I run, which I hope you don't get motion sickness. Having a look under here, I've got in the column on the left, I've got about a thousand of the Berger 109 grain hybrids. And uh, that was that was basically my my plan um, around the 6GT. So it's been early days with development. I sort of put a hundred rounds through the barrel before I, before I even started low development. I literally took the took the rifle up to my local range at 400 meters and using Lapua Sina 105 grain projectiles, uh, nearly shot two two clean stages for you know like a double possible afternoon. I shot 149 with 15 X's out of a possible 150 with 25 X's. Uh, first stage, which was two and ten scoring, shot a 60 with six, and then backed it up with an 89 with um, 89 with nine in the second stage. Uh, I lost one one in the five ring low, and I think that was partly me rushing. I had a pretty good string running. I, had, I think I had five or six X's in a row and was. Uh, Probably a part, partly, you know, machine gunning it, and um, there was a little bit of a tailwind coming through, which um, just a subtle little switch which I missed, and uh, that put me in the five ring. So uh, a little bit of a lesson there, but you know, I I didn't really think, I didn't really expect that I was going to shoot a score like that with no no low development whatsoever. Uh, so that gave me. Some, some pretty good reason to be optimistic in in tuning up the 6GT and getting getting a bit more out of it. Um, the Lapua Sinars, it was a very light load of uh, 2209. I just sort of stuck 36 grains in. I knew that was going to be safe based on some of the available load data out there. Um, a lot of, a few got, well, a few guys running the same powder were up around the 38 grain mark, so I knew 36 was going to be safe. And that, uh, that yielded an average of 2,900 feet per second. And the 6GT is sort of you know, designed to match the dasher in velocity. And with the 105 grain pills, be just up over that 3,000 feet per second mark. Uh, but that's out of 26-inch barrels, not 32s. So I knew with, uh, with this truck axle hanging off the, hanging off the rifle, uh, my velocity was probably going to be increased yet again. And that's turned out to be the case. So I suppose the other thing as well, we've been absolutely hammered here on the east coast of Australia uh, this summer in terms of rain. And particularly particularly the last two to three weeks, it has just been non-stop like a tropical sort of you know monsoon wet season. Uh, I'm in Sydney uh, and we've had we've had some major flooding down here, uh, but further further north on the east coast of Australia, you know Queensland around Brisbane, Sunshine Coast, Gold Coast, they've been absolutely smashed. Far north New South Wales has been absolutely smashed. People have lost their homes. People have died. Um, you know, thankfully it hasn't quite reached those same levels down here in Sydney, but nonetheless, you know we've got um, a lot of areas that are that are underwater, a lot of homes that have gone underwater and subsequently my local range um, which is elevated but it's also gone underwater um, particularly down in the butts uh, so I'll be surprised if I get to shoot within the next two weeks but what I did, what I have been able to do so far is get to an indoor range and at least start uh, some powder charge um, development on the 6GT 
I do have a supply of Varget or ADI 2208 as we as we know it in Australia. I haven't tried that powder yet. Uh, when my gunsmith Matt uh, chambered this up, he took one look at the case and said it's a it's a 2209 case. And based off on, on what I've seen so far, I certainly in terms of velocity, I tend to agree. Uh, so I started my load development with the Berger 109s at 36.5 grains of 2209. And I've taken it as high as 38.5 grains. Now, 36.5 grains gave me an average velocity of 29, uh, yeah, 29.90 feet per second. Uh, so I think there may have been a little bit of a barrel speed up effect as it's as it's been uh, run in. 38 and a half grains gave me just a shade under 3100 feet per second and there was still no real obvious pressure signs when um, I was ejecting the cases out. The primers were not flattened or crated in any way, shape or form. The bolt lift at 38.5 felt pretty much the same as it did at 36.5, which again leads me to believe that the the slow burn rate of 2209 in a case as small as the GT makes it quite safe um, in, in terms of the pressures that you will you will run. Uh, if I was running 2208, I don't believe I would have the um, the the same amount of freedom to load load up um, you know I won't say hot because it's not it's not hot in this gun at least anyway so but uh, I did find a nice node around 38.1 grains of 2209 and that gave me an average velocity of about 3054 feet per second with an SD of 4.2 so, and I think the extreme spread was about 11 or 12 feet per second. That was using Cellier and Bello primers, which are pretty well unobtainium, unavailable anywhere right now. Um, I've been fortunate enough to sit on a, a little bit of a supply of the small rifle S&B primers, uh, as well as CCI BR4 primers, the, uh, the bench rest ones. So I, when I did my, my powder charge, I actually ran identical loads, uh, also testing the primers to see if there was much of a difference. Uh, whilst I'm not putting a lot of powder in, in these, uh, these cases, uh, I was just interested to see if, uh, if one primer produced better, better load data than the other. And that certainly turned out to be the case. The S&B primers shot inside the CCI BR4 primers on every powder charge that I tried. Uh, and that has proven to be true in pretty much um, all, of my, uh, all of my rifles. I primarily run S&B primers and um, CCI are, are the backup. Uh, federal primers at the moment pretty well sold out. The CCIs, you know, I think there's like 800,000 BR2 primers on back order here in Australia. You just can't, just can't get them right now. So it just goes to show how much the uh, reloading component shortage is, is hurting around the world. And um, yeah, so moving forward, the next step for, for this project is to really get the rifle out at distance now and start a bullet seating depth test. So when I'm going to get to do that, I'm not quite sure. The rain has sort of held off for most of today in Sydney, but um, I think we're going to need probably, you know, almost two good weeks of dry weather before, you know, a lot of, a lot of sporting ovals and, you know, grounds open up and that includes my my local, local rifle range, which is probably going to require some uh, uh, some heavy lifting from uh, a lot of the members to uh, do some maintenance and, and patch things up where it's where it's needed. So, yeah, uh, hope uh, hope you found this video informative. Uh, this is sort of the the next stage for 
for this particular setup and um, I'll, uh, I'll keep you all tuned in for um, how the bullet seating depth testing goes. Thanks for watching and uh, if there's any questions or, or comments feel free to uh, throw them in below. Thanks.